So, were you ever just casually gaming or running rendering tasks and noticed your laptop's system performance severely hampered? Well, there's a good chance your system was overheating, but there is also a good chance it is a software-related issue caused by the pesky Intel Dynamic Platform and Thermal Framework, DPTF, on some high-powered laptops from Dell and other brands. What it does is it dynamically alters the CPU clock speed based on your system load and temperature. However, sometimes the software assumes that because of a certain power draw of your system, you must be approaching thermal limits, when in actual fact you may not be, and the software can in turn react by lowering your CPU clock speed to as low as 800 MHz, severely crippling any gaming or rendering tasks that you had running. I noticed this almost immediately with my Dell G7, that even after a repaste, the system would still throttle down even while having more than enough thermal headroom. The solution? Getting rid of Intel DPTF software entirely. Now, a couple of things you need to know before getting started. Because your system will be capable of running full tilt for extended periods, it is recommended that you have some sort of way of monitoring your system temperatures as frequently as possible. I have enabled CPU and GPU temperature taskbar widgets via hardware info to allow me to do this easily. You can also use the OSD in MSI after burner for the same purpose while gaming. Another thing, if your system is naturally not capable of sustaining high wattage for extended periods without thermal throttling, either due to old paste or inadequate thermal design, then it is recommended that you limit your CPU clock to around 3.0 GHz via throttle stop. What this will allow your system to do is to have a hard target to push up against consistently without running the risk of thermal throttling. So, the first thing you'll need to do is disable your Wi-Fi to prevent the software from reinstalling itself. Then you open Device Manager and look out for the Intel Dynamic Platform and Thermal Framework Generic Participant. So what this Generic Participant does is it's the one that's actually throttling your system when you, when you reach a certain temperature. So you want to make sure you delete each and every one of those Generic Participants, but just make sure you don't touch the Thermal Framework Manager. Keep that one intact. Then the next thing you'll need to do is you'll need to go into the Windows folder that has those driver files installed. Um, the exact steps for, for accessing those folders is listed in the link in the description. So I won't go through that right now. But um, basically, essentially what you want to do is you want to grant yourself full access to those folders, which will then allow you to delete the, every single file that's within those folders. So this is mainly done by giving yourself full read-write and, uh, and other access to the specific profile for your computer. Because the default profile that has access to those folders is system. So when it's, when it's configured under system, you won't be able to access them even if you're an administrator of your system. So you'll need to set your actual profile to be the one that's accessing those folders. Also, do kindly note that you may get some, some error messages while doing this process. Just make sure that um, as long as they're within reason, more or less, you should still be able to access and delete those files within those folders, provided you follow all the steps, of course. So now, once you access the folder, once you've granted yourself access, you should be able to, to delete every single file within those folders. Now, do kindly note that uh, you might be able, to, you might need rather to do this multiple times, because uh, your system will be trying to reinstall those files. Actually, it's Windows that will try to reinstall those files each and every time you restart your system. So you may find that you will run your system without those files, and then when you restart your system, they'll have reinstalled, and then you'll have the same problem again. So you may need to do it multiple times. So there's two folders that you need to access. As I said, um, both of them are listed in the, 
in the link in the description um, and you will need to do the same procedure for both to give to grant yourself full access to be able to delete the files within those folders now as I said because your system may reinstall each of those files you just need to make sure that you you you're able to delete them permanently so one way you of doing this is by actually running a restart on your system but the other way is also just um, monitoring your temperatures and your clock speeds while running any benchmarking software or stress test software just to make sure that you have some reasonable level of effect on your system uh, what I'd say a positive effect on the temperatures and the clock speeds so as you can see there the files actually um, reinstalled themselves and the drivers within device manager actually reinstalled themselves so I had to delete them once again just making sure that you don't touch the manager and then you delete the files and then you now restart your system again to make sure that this, the files are actually gone this time around. So, once you've successfully deleted the Intel Dynamic Platform and Thermal Framework generic drivers, you should be able to see some exclamation marks next to an unknown device within Device Manager. What this will mean is the drivers have actually been searched for by the system but your system has been unable to find the drivers or to reinstall the drivers even with an internet connection as an example here you can see that the system is able to maintain its high boost clock of around 3.5 gigahertz at 45 watts for an, for an extended period because the system is within the thermal limits that are set by the by the particular manufacturer and also by Intel which is actually what you want with your system because what I was finding previously is that my system was throttling even when I had a lot of thermal headroom so when I was at around 75 degrees Celsius it would down clock the system drastically to around 0.8 gigahertz which um, was, a, was really affecting performance, even if it was actually able to run much faster. Even within games, you should still be able to observe the same general trend, because now your system will be able to run much faster and for extended periods, even when it's running at high temperatures. As I said before though, you need to monitor exactly how high your temperatures are going because now your system almost doesn't have some sort of um, security mechanism to prevent itself from overheating so if you monitor your system your system's temperature using an osd while gaming or using as i said hardware info or any other software while running stress tests and benchmarks and other rendering applications then you should be able to avoid running into any issues of maybe potentially damaging your system. And another way of maybe restricting that damage is by actually restricting the clock speed of your CPU. So if you restrict it while gaming to around 3.2 gigahertz, you'll find that you may not run into as much of a, a temperature issue as while running at the full 3.9 or so gigahertz of, uh, or whatever your system runs at. So I'd actually say it's quite convenient to run your system at a slightly lower clock speed, which will give you significantly higher temperature performance as well as um, gaming performance. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful. Please like and subscribe. And in case of any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.